This is the Projogo story through the eyes of Jan and Brian Shanahan. As you can see, this book was made by Jan in 1983, covering the journey of adopting her first son. Jan and Brian had so much love to give, and I needed someone to love me, a home and a future. Whenever I asked mum about my adoption, she always feared that she was always my mum and I always asked questions over the years about my family and being the final Indonesian to ever be adopted out of the country to Australia, my orphanage being closed and my grandparents both deceased, I really had, you know, no chance of ever understanding where I came from. So the best way my mum used to settle my nerves and possibly uh, make sense of all was this little poem, Legacy of an Adopted Child. Once there were two women who never knew other. One you don't remember, the other you call mother. Two different lives shaped to sake to make yours one. One became your guiding star, the other became your son. The first gave you life, the second taught you to live in it. The first gave you a need for love, the second was there to give it. One gave you a nationality, the other gave you a name. One gave you the seed of talent, the other gave you a name. One gave you emotions, the other calmed your fears. One saw your first sweet smile, the other cried your tears. One gave you up, it was all she could do. The other prayed for a child, God led her straight to you. Now you ask me through your tears, the age-old question through the years, heredity of environment, which are you the product of? Neither, my darling, neither. Just two different kinds of love. After two long years of waiting on February the 18th, 1983, we received a phone call from Asiac Adelaide to say we had been allocated a little boy Sedio Panomo, born in Surabaya, Indonesia, on 13th April 1981. He was being cared for in a baby's home run by Gan Koensan in Semarang. Two weeks later, we received our first photos. What a beautiful little boy. They had been taken by Greg Redden, Asiak's field officer in Indonesia, on 22nd February. He said Celio did not like being woken up, but did have a game with him eventually. After waiting patiently, we received a phone call on Easter Saturday night to say we had been in Samarang, Indonesia, no later than Sunday the 10th of April. It didn't seem to be enough time to get organised, but we made it flying from Adelaide at the 10 to 7 Sunday morning to Melbourne, then to Sydney for Qantas Flight 29 to Bali and Jakarta. Our first look at Indonesia was Bali Airport, where we stopped for about an hour. The heat was incredible. I had been cold, wet and windy when we had left Adelaide. We arrived in Jakarta at 1pm Indonesian time, about 10pm SA time. Both tired, hot, headaches and ready for bed, but who could sleep? Came through customs, battled for a taxi, and after a hair-raising drive, we arrived at Wisma DGI, the guest house recommended by Asiak, at Jalan Jaku Uma Seva team. Next morning, we ventured out to head for the Australian Embassy to let them know we, ha we were heading to Samarang, and would be back in a few weeks for a visa for Sedio. We decided to take a cheap form of taxi, 
a bizarre three-wheeled cab. What an experience. We took a taxi on the rest of the journey. About 10am we caught a flight with Garuda to Samarang, where we met Owen Garm and Greg Redden and taken the babies home to meet Sedio. He wasn't very... He wasn't very happy meeting us and actually threw a biscuit at me when I had tried to give it to him. But after a few hours of getting used to one another and some lunch, we soon found out that the way the Sedio's heart was through his stomach, we went to a little cottage in the grounds of Jonah Ruth Girls Orphanage where we were to stay. Also saying there was a Dutch couple adopting a boy as well. On Tuesday, we spent the day getting Sedio used to the sh get to the use of the stroller we had taken with us. He was too heavy to carry, and he couldn't walk very well, as he had spent most of his short life laying in a cot, and his legs weren't very strong. To start with, we couldn't get him in when we got used to it, and now we couldn't get him out of the the stroller. Here are some pictures at the orphanage. Dutch couple, Om Garn, Greg, Sedio and Jan. Obviously I liked the the uh, stroller. On Wednesday the 13th of April, Sedio's second birthday, Om Garn picked up us very early in a minibus and we travelled to Karyamya in the province of Sedio for our court hearing. We were appointed a lawyer and Greg Redden was our translator. Sedio couldn't keep still, kept climbing all over us. The lawyer's clerk eventually gave him a banana, which he promptly threw. He was good at throwing things, we were finding out. It broke the tension anyway, and after 45 minutes of our adoption... ...was granted. After the hearing, Greg told us that they didn't think it would be granted at the first go but didn't tell us before as he didn't want us to worry. He said it was in our favour that Sedio was a quite happy with us, and although the judge thought he had been with us more than a week, he wanted to know it was only two days. He didn't want to know it was only two days. After the court having, we travelled up into the mountains of Tawi Manju for lunch. There were a lot of monkeys which I didn't like much. We returned to Samarang late afternoon in the pouring rain. Unfortunately, none of the photos we took this day turned out. A bow at Penta Mass. Next day, Thursday, we went shopping and after lunch, we went out to the golf course at Samarang. Brian and Greg played while I pushed Sedia around in the pusher. It was really hot. After tea that night, we went 10-pin bowling and we had spaghetti for tea made a change from rice. Friday afternoon we travelled by bus to Yogyakarta to stay at a Bodik Petama guest house with Bronwyn and Dennis Russell and their two sons, Deddy and Wadato. Next day, Greg, Brian and Sedio had to go back to Samarang to arrange Sedio's passport in the immigration department. I stayed in the old, in the air-conditioned comfort The next few days we went shopping and sightseeing with the Russells, including a trip to the Borbrudua Temple while waiting for the passport to be finalised. On Thursday, while April, we flew from Yogyakarta to Jakarta and met Greg, who travelled overnight on the tram. We spent the day getting visa, etc. at Australian Embassy, confirmed our flight home Friday night, shopping and a night out in Jakarta. Had a meal at a small English style pub, then to the nightclub to hear some great music. Sedio gave me a kiss today. I felt great. Friday we went out to Jaman Mini Indonesia where we saw all different buildings and cultures of Indonesia. Arriving home at airport. We caught Qantas flight 30 at 9pm Friday night after slight delay at immigration, where they lost one of the papers for a while. 
and arrived home in Adelaide at 1pm Saturday, tired and pleased to be home to cool weather. Sedia is very settled with us, doesn't like us out of his sight, and loves his food and sleep. I don't think much has changed. Home in Australia. My first home was in a place called Victor Harbour in South Australia. I just looking at these pictures here. I think I was glad to be a part of a a happy family that could uh, provide a safe and secure place for me. I think looking at the photos when I was younger, the orphanage was a very traumatic and scary place for me and my legs were really undeveloped and and even now I suffer from some sore backs and um, issues with my hips and, and legs as well and bad ankles and knees. Here are some of the uh, interesting things. Here is um, my grandma and grandpa, Goet Hoen and Go Chiang Han. Um, who I discovered were Genua and Bertha Priogo 37 years later. Here is my court order. Here's the copy of um, Jen and Brian's certificate to adopt. My citizenship, followed by a Vegemite kid, which, uh, true Vegemite kid, which we are, and... Indonesians aren't a huge fan of it. Here is Greg Redham. Cheers to you, son. Uh, amazing that your nephew was an uh, attendee at our wedding. Well, I hope you enjoyed Jen and Brian's version of my adoption through the eyes of only the gift of love they helped pave the way to discover who I really am 37 years later. Thanks for listening to the Projogo story.